Hi, it's Greg Harrell here, and I want to share a quick tip with you about dealing with Git output. Now, just say I've got uh, some Git output that is long enough to require a pager, because I might need to scroll through it, um, like this Git log output. Now, it's possible to precede the pager with a search pattern, so that when you hit N, it'll jump to the next incidence of the pattern. So in this case, I've got it configured to jump between commits or between files in diffs. So when I hit N, you'll see it jumped to a line starting with the word diff. And as I keep hitting N, you'll see it's jumping basically to lines with the word commit or the word uh, diff in the leftmost column. And in this way, I'm able to navigate around the log. Now, let me show you where I got this idea from, and then I'm going to give you some details on how to make it work a little bit better. So if we go to the web browser here, um, there's this project called Diff So Fancy. And the idea of this is that it is a post processor for Git diff output to make it look a little bit, a little bit nicer. Um, and on their uh, pro tips page here, they have a tip uh, for setting up the diff command in GIF in Git to take the output of diff so fancy and pipe it through less, um, but specifically precede it with a pattern. So the reason why the pattern it's looking for here is date added deleted modified is because that's how diff so fancy shows hunks of interest in the diff output. Now I don't use diff so fancy. Uh, but you could apply this idea of using a pattern to, to either the raw output of git diff or any other tool that post processes git diff. So there's a couple of other ones. There's a delta, which I just learned about. Um, it's written in Rust and is, if it's possible, even fancier than diff so fancy, as you can see. Um, and then there's the diff highlight package, uh, which is just a Perl module. Um, and that comes with git itself, um, if you choose to install it. Um, and the idea of this one is similar to diff so fancy. It basically highlights words that have changed within lines. Um, but as I said, this technique could work in theory with any diff filter or the raw diff output. So let's have a look at my dot files and I'll show you uh, how I've implemented this. Um, there it is. So here in the pages section, you'll see um, the first deviation from that tip um, that I've made is that I'm not doing it just for the diff command because there are a few commands in Git that all can provide diff-like output. Um, log being an obvious one, um, which I have already demonstrated. And then there's show, which will just show an arbitrary object from the Git object database, um, usually a commit, but it could also be a blob or anything else. Um, and then there's uh, what changed, uh, which is basically Git log with some options set. So for all of those, I am using this pattern trick. Uh, Let's have a look at a couple of the other differences between this setup and the one that was in that document. Well, the first one is um, I'm using this diff highlight tool instead of uh, diff so fancy. Now this diff highlight tool is basically just a fork of the one that comes with Git. Um, and I'll give you a demo of that. Um, now the reason I fork this is because I um, started working in projects that used tabs for white space. I'm gonna show you one of those like this one. Now, if I look at the log uh, of this project, you'll see that uh, the tabs are visible in the diff output. So basically I just hacked that diff highlight script to show me the tabs. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because uh, people can damage this white space if they're not careful. And if you can't see it with your eyes when you're looking at the diff, you won't catch it unless you've got some kind of linter or git commit hook running. So for me, it was pretty important to be able to see the tabs. And um, that's what I've got with this script. Um, I'll just show you the diff. You can see I prepared this earlier. Uh, this is a diff showing the changes that I made to the diff highlight script that comes with Git. Um, and if you actually look at it, most of it is me just deleting stuff that I don't care about. So all that stuff about highlighting words in lines, I just deleted it um, and replaced it with some fairly simple code that, as you can see here, um, basically just replaces tabs with this special Unicode markup here. Now, if I pipe some of that output to a another pager, in other words, not an interactive terminal, but another process, this filter uh, won't run. So for example, if we look at that in less now, you'll see that in this version, um, for one thing, there's no color, but um, for another, all those tabs are invisible now. So if I ever need to copy paste diff output to stick in a message to someone, I'll just pipe it into cat, for example, um, so that I get this kind of raw diff without any of those weird tab characters that obviously aren't in the source, because in the source, it's a real tab character, not a picture of a tab character. Um, so that is, as I said, the first um, obvious difference here uh, that I'm using this.
Um, the next is that instead of using less, I'm using menos. Now, menos is just the Spanish word for less. Um, the reason uh, why I chose that word is because I needed to make a, a, a wrapper um, to wrap less because there are some curious things that happen to less when you pass it one of these pattern strings. Um, one of them is that the F switch doesn't work. Now, the F switch is quite useful, so I'll, let me have a look here. Um, I've got to find a short file here, like, say, for instance, variables ts is pretty short, so less. I'm going to put that into less. Now, when f is in effect, less will exit as soon as it's finished printing a file's contents, provided that they fit on a single screen. Um, and f is in effect now, because if I uh, echo my less variable, you'll see that I've exported this into my environment, so f is in effect even though I didn't explicitly pass it. Now, if f wasn't in effect, when I was, when I cat a or, or look at a file in less that is shorter than a full screen full, I'll stay in less, which is not so convenient. And so for me, this is useful. For example, if I'm looking at the output of git status, I don't want to have to hit Q to exit the pager. I generally want my pager commands in git to exit as long as they all fit it on one screen. So as I was saying, uh, when you pass a pattern argument to less, it loses the behavior of f. So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to pass in pattern const and I'm going to look at variables ts again. And you'll see what it did there. It left me in the pager. And furthermore, it painted the whole screen, which is kind of annoying as well, because when I hit q to get out of this, I can't see what I did before. Um, so that's why I made menos, because I wanted to get around that annoying behavior. So let's, uh, let me show you what menos looks like. Menos is just this really simple uh, Ruby script that um, if you're in an inter interactive shell, it just calls less. So it behaves exactly like less in every way. Um, and then if you're not in the interactive shell, it means you're being piped to. Um, it does this thing where we count the number of lines on the screen um, and we buffer that many lines of input. And if we run out of input without hitting the bottom of the screen, then we know that we don't actually have to pass the pattern argument. We should just invoke uh, less as is and let it exit. Um, and I can't actually see where that is. Oh yeah, we uh, we basically delete the pattern argument in that case. Uh, and then the other thing that's in here is this horrible hack. It's so horrible it's actually labeled as a hack. Basically, we go into the less history file, which is a file that less maintains um, remembering all the things you've searched for before. And we make sure that the last thing in it is that string that we were looking for, commit or diff. So it's kind of sneaky. This We're just going to append these two lines to the file. Um, and in that way, Things work nicely. I'll give you a demo of that. So just say I'm logging, looking through a log output and I search for the word trick. You'll see there that it jumped to the word trick. Now, without manipulating the history file, if I were to look at the log again and hit N, it would actually jump to trick and not to the next commit. But in this case, it is jumping to the next commit because I hacked the history file. So that's one of the other changes. And then finally, the rest of this menos script uh, doesn't really do anything that interesting. You can see here that it catches interrupts and forwards them to the child process because normally less uh, handles the interrupt signal in a specific way, depending on the command line options you've given to it. And the rest of this wrapper is just piping the output through to the sub child process. So that's menos. Uh, and then there are two more things to comment about here, or three. The uh, the first of those is that you'll see here we've got a literal K here at the beginning of our search pattern, instead of just a uh, caret to indicate the start of a line followed by the word that we're looking for. Now, the reason we do the caret K is if you look in the last man page, um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this K, it basically tells less to highlight the pattern you're looking for, but don't move to it. Um, and so the purpose of this setting is to ensure that if that string, for whatever reason, was not the first character in the output, I don't want the pager scrolling um, when I'm running a git command. I want the pager to always start by showing me the first line. So that's what that K does. Uh, the second item is this thing at the end here, plus R, that basically has the effect of refreshing the screen. Now, why would we want to do that? I'll show you. Um, one of the commands that we're running through this custom setup is show. And like usually it's just going to show the head commit, but you can also use show to show things that aren't commits. So for example, you can, you'll see here, I'm going to just look at the read, readme. Um, that just dumped it into less. Now in this case, 
the string that we're looking for is not found. Um, and so and you'll see this pattern not found. Now, without repainting the screen, I would see an error there. So I guess one way to demonstrate this is just going to be open some other, other file. So um, let's open etc. password with some random crap that's not going to be there. Uh, that didn't actually show anything. That's because it's got to be the first argument. It's got to come before the file name argument. Pattern, garbage, etc. password. So you see here it said pattern not found, and it didn't show me any of the file, which is super annoying, until I hit return. So if I do that same thing again and hit R to repaint the screen, then I do see the file. So that's what that plus R there on the end of the line is doing. It's basically ensuring that if, for whatever reason, any of these commands didn't have a match of that pattern, then uh, we at least show the file, and we don't show that annoying error message. Um, I think the other special use case that we should signal here is that Something like git diff can sometimes return no output at all. So I think if we look at this output now, I've got no changes. If I hit git diff, I don't actually want to fire up a pager at all. So that's another thing that Menos handles. If there's no output, it doesn't even fork less. Um, and that leaves me with the one last thing that I wanted to comment about this setup, and that is that um, in a number of other commands, um, I have aliases that end up calling log. So I'm going to search for pager here. Oops, pager. Here's one of them, count. Maybe there's a more interesting one. Maybe it's paginator I've got to find. There we go. So here's a wrapper for git log that ends up painting a graph of commits. So for example, I'll show you what that looks like here. Uh, not very interesting in this repo because it's a linear history, but in a repo with multiple branches that are non-linear, it shows a tree shape. Um, but you'll notice that this output doesn't have any of those symbols that we're looking for at the start of the line, like the word commit or the line diff. So piping it through, uh, diff highlight and menos here is totally useless and so that's what this command line switch does it basically says put this uh, commands output through a pager overriding the settings that are in the the pager config that i showed you earlier so this means that it just uses git's default pager which is less i mean as i showed you earlier because i have these environment variables set Git will use those two for less, um, which gives me some desirable behaviors. Uh, and I think that's about it, really. Um, so that's all I got to say on the subject of paginating stuff from Git commands. I guess the only thing that I would mention that I haven't been able to polish to my liking so far, and I really don't know if it's possible, is that uh, when you're looking at one of these outputs, when you hit slash, prints this error message the first time. Um, you have to hit slash again to actually search. So once again, if I want to search for trick, I can do that, but not after the first slash. The curiosity about this is that if I do any movement at all, uh, the first slash is going to work. So I, I haven't gotten to the bottom of why that is. Um, I know it doesn't happen if I just cat stuff into Menos. So I don't think it's a Menos specific problem. Um, I see the same thing if I use less. Um, and the common factor seems to be that uh, this only happens when Git is the one who's calling the pager. So it's a bit of a mystery, um, a little wrinkle that I don't like, but it's not going to ruin my life, I guess. So uh, that's how it is for now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.